G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, I've got some updates coming on some of the kits I've finished for this year, but I had to sneak this review in. I just picked this up from the hobby store. I, I, I ordered it um, Christmas Eve because it, it came up um, on one of the Facebook advertisements for Hobby One, uh, which is one of the stores that our club is actually uh, tied in with for our prizes down in Brisbane. So the um, the prizes that I picked up this year from all um, competitions, I got them from Hobby One and chatting with the guys there, getting to know the new manager. Great guys, really good bunch down there. It's a, it's a, we've really improved the shop actually. There was a time when I wasn't that happy with Hobby One, but boy, have they come in leaps and bounds. Their online shopping's great. Anyway, enough of an advert for Hobby One. This kit popped up and I love World War One battleships. You know, all the Dreadnought in the pre-Dreadnought stuff. And this one I had never seen before. I know Combrig had a one, I think it was a resin one, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, this is a full plastic kit and most of it is slide molded, I kid you not. This is beautiful, wait till I open this box because I, I don't even think I need anything, I think I could just build it out of the box here, more of that later. The box itself, as you can see, is bigger than my mat. I actually had to get my uh, measuring out, 25 inches. That's over two foot, or in, you know, in, in, the, in the decameters that we talk about, 640 of those um, mills, yeah. So it's big. It builds up to 573 millimeters long and 80 millimeters wide. This is a big ship. There's not much bigger in my stash, actually. I only like the hood and the Rochelle and a few things like that. This is going to be one of the bigger ships. But I'm reviewing this because straight off the Varag, which I will finish, I'm going to stay on track with that, but straight off the Varag, I'm going to build this. It's going to be one of my very first battleships. Well, essentially, it's a battle cruiser, but it's going to be one of my big builds for 2018. All right, enough waffling. Let's open the bloody box and see what's inside. Now, in case you're interested, the um, side of the box has top view with a bit of a painting diagram there, although I'll probably ignore that. I really like the box art. I love what they've done here on the box art, and I think I'm going to paint it basically like that. Um, because that's what attracted when I saw the, the picture online. I just went, oh, that is fantastic. I have to have that. I have to have that. But um, they've, got, they've got all the colour callouts um, in, inside there. And basically it's sort of a bluey colour, the body, and um, then a lighter colour for superstructure. But we'll see. I'll probably end up you know, doing my own thing. Uh, PE, decals, you know, you get all that. The usual sort of thing. The box just gives you a bit of blue. But let's look at the most important thing, which is the plastic. Now, the hull pretty well fills the box, and look at this, this is unusual, and I love this bit of packaging. They have put a separator in to keep the hull from bashing into and banging into parts below, which is protecting those parts, and it's protecting the hull. That's, that's good. Well done, Hobby Boss, you guys are learning. You're doing a much better job. And this is very securely molded. This is obviously injection molded by the looks of things. And that's okay. Uh, we'll rip that out of the bag shortly and we'll go through every sprue in detail. But let's just let's just see what's in the box. Oh, there was a bit of advertising, you know. Yes. A bit of, you know, as usual, they give you a bit of advertising, you know. Come buy more. Buy more of our stuff. And um, they even give you a hint there of what's going to happen and what's in here. Anyway. So, yes, you get this lovely little insert. Oh, oh, oh. oh. was that good for you? <laughs> um, I've already had a bit of a poke, so I've done a few things. One, one of my pet hates that um, these guys, they put the instructions in and they're kind of all bended and folded, which means when you go to build the kit, the bloody paperwork's all flopping around everywhere. Straight away, I fold it in half because it's a lot easier to deal with a lot of flat folds. And quite frankly, Hobby Boss and everyone else, guys, don't do the bendy fold thing. Just fold them in half. And the same here with the paint call out, right? I folded it there where it's not going to interfere at all with the drawing, right? I'd rather not have a crease down the middle of my kit. I folded it that way. So hopefully that'll flatten out. I'll put that in the bottom of the box. By the time I come to build it, it might flatten out. Or I'll just have to get bass the cap to get the iron out and give that thing a once over. Anyhow, uh, you've got this basically again as the same as the um, on the side of the box. It's got this bluey colour and the call out they're giving is actually a grey blue. So we'll see, but I might do some scale reduction and do some fading and that sort of thing because I like the box art. I'm going to make it a bit more like that. And similarly, here they've got um, H, they're saying is, is red. Well, it's not going to be, right? In reality, it is going to be a duller colour. And, and interestingly, they call out the um, the hull here, which, which does look red. looks like hull red. They've actually called it out as, um, let me have a look there again, cocoa brown. 
bloody chocolate. So um, I think that's back to front. I, I think that would be chocolate and that would be whole red. But we'll see. I might do a little bit of research on that. But um, we'll see. But basically, it's a battleship. Well, battle cruiser. Grey on top, red on the bottom, and it's got a tan deck. Now this deck, we'll get to that in a sec, this deck is amazing. I have ordered a wood deck, but I'm about to cancel that, because quite frankly, these deck parts, and I haven't even got them out of the bags yet, they are incredible. And slide moulding, you can tell because basically it's got um, these sort of little tabby things. More about that shortly. Decks are all in separate bags. Look, deck, deck, all in separate bags. Everything is, is looked after. Now there's another one in there somewhere, we'll come to it. Um, there's the funnel assembly, it's in a separate bag, and that looks like slide moulding. It is crisp, it's clear, it's lovely. Going to detail with that later. Some more, that's um, that's probably the forward mount for the, um, the forward funnel. That's all there, that's slide moulded. Uh, there's another little part, oh actually, go to this one. This sprue will go in detail, again more slide moulding, you can tell because it's got little flat sprues, so therefore the thing must have slid over. Going to detail with that shortly, that's a whole lot of things to the funnels. And I love that they do this trumpeter and Hobby Wars do this. Essentially, it's the same company, so they're with different names. But um, there's parts in there that are all protected with this foamy stuff, which is terrific. Which means those tiny, we'll get to that in a sec, there's some very fine, thin parts in there. And they're all nice and safe and secure in that. And look, there's more. Here's, um, here's more deck. Oh, I can't wait to get these decks out and show you. And I'll do some close up photos to show you what they've done with the deck detail. It's so good. And there's really so few greebles on this that I'm really considering for once painting it and just or masking the greebles and, and basically painting the deck and doing some uh, some effects. We'll see. We'll see. It's um it's a kit worthy of doing it that way. Uh, turrets. You got two sprues, so you get six turrets. You get a spare one to play with. Yes, you can play with. I'll give it to Bass Cat. And again, some very fine parts. The barrels. I've had a quick look at those. They are they're even well. I don't need to order barrels that I had. I had already, basically. But we'll see. We'll compare the barrels I've ordered and um, to these. They, they look fantastic. Go to those in a sec. And um, then you've got some bulkheads to keep the, um, the hull right. You've got anchors. You've got boats. And you've got um, some davits and a few other little bits and pieces. All right. And then here, this is your... Um, I always forget what these things are called. I had a bit of brain fart when I was doing the bloody Varag as well. These are basically for the um, the screws. So these are your propulsion um, tubes. Prop tubes. What do you call them? Oh, I forget. My brain's bloody stuffed. But anyhow, there's um, four on this, and it's another lovely, lovely piece of moulding. I don't know if that is um, injection. Oh, sorry, uh, slide moulding. Looks like just an injector part. But they've kept that separate. But it certainly is quality. Then you get um, day cows. That we've decided that's how you say it now. Otherwise, water slide transfers. I'm sick of this argument. Water slides, you've got the insignias for the top of the turrets. You've got um, yeah, and a few few little things. So there you go. So that, it comes with a chain. So there you go. You can pull your own chain. Right? <laughs> Bit of Aussie humour. Um, and then you get one, two. They're the same. That's basically funnel pieces and davits and everything. This is photo etch, by the way, in case you don't know what I'm talking about. And then rails, and again, ladders, and bits and bobs and greebles and things. And then more rails, all the correct length, all ready to go. What more do you need? Let's have a quick look through the instructions, and then we'll refer to the parts as we go along. And here we have the instructions. And they're pretty standard now for um, Hobby Boss and Trumpeter kits. Get them a nice book form. You get a black and white um, profile drawing and very clearly so uh, do's and don'ts, you know. You know, don't put it in your bathtub unless you've got enough room because you might injure yourself and, um, and all the rest of it, yes. So um, moving right along, you get a sprue map and believe it or not, the, um, the numbers are on there. But they're about the same size as they are on the sprue. So I had to get my extra strong reading glasses out to see them. Let me show you. So... Numbers are on there, but they are tiny. Font size one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm wobbling all around. So font size one. Yes. So at least you better find your parts if you've got your extra strong reading glasses on. Yeah, bloody hell. Okay. At least it's all there. And, and as I showed my box, you get a lot of parts. There's a lot of really good stuff here. These, um, these sprues, interestingly, you didn't get the sprue. You just got the parts already cut out for you. 
get to those later on. They, they appear to be supports for the, um, the funnels and they look slide molded to me. Um, okay, hull gloss kicks off with step one, which is put the hull together and it's got some lovely bulkheads in here, which are going to give it a lot of rigidity. Very impressed with that with the Varag and um, it saved me having to usually scratch build underneath the deck and put a lot of reinforcing in to keep the whole thing together. This will not only keep the shape of the hull, which just makes it you know, easy for you to cement it all up and um, make sure that you're not um, pinching it or leaving the thing too yawed wide when you when you put it to first put it together but you'll get the correct width for the deck to go on and not only that the deck will have some support so you know gee kits have come a long way since that um, Arizona which was also Hobby Boss this is nothing like that this is later stuff this is 2017 release um, so I imagine they've been working on it the last year or so and um, boy have they punched out what seems to be a very nice kit. So let's have a look at the plastic then. I'm going to do my review slightly differently this time. We'll have the instructions and we'll look at the plastic parts so we'll get some reference. And here is the hull. It is huge. As, as I said before, it's it's long. It's over two foot. Now the stern here looks very nice. These portholes are so deep and so nicely done that you almost get away with not drawing them out. Look at that. It's even, you know, <laughs> you've just got a gaping hole there. Really, you could just put a tiny wash in there and um, you wouldn't have to draw them out. I wonder if that's possible. And there's the spaces there for the prop shafts. Oh, gee, I'm never going to live that one down. The, um, the stabilizers here are molded in, which I prefer. I had such a devil of a job trying to get them to fit on the Vag. I probably put them in back to front, upside down, and God knows what. Um, but um, I like that. That's already done for you. There's not much detail. It's pretty, pretty plain Jane here. There's not much going on at all. Um, there's a tiny bit, oh, I don't know, that's, that just might be me seeing things, but really there's nothing much at all. This is very smooth. So um, no indication of the waterline, no. Is there a faint line there? I can't see it. I cannot see it at all. So basically it's, um, at least from, from the deck level down, there's nothing. So if you want to put uh, some, some tea bagging or whatever you call it, oil canning <laughs> on there or add some some indication that there are plates where well, you'd have to do that yourself, you have to go and scribe all that. Won't worry me too much because I'll probably just um, put some weathering on here and um, it'll just be a clear canvas for me to paint on, so have some fun. Portholes again here, all beautifully rendered and um, there's not much, there's not much going on. There's a nice little spot there so you know exactly where to put the crest. But I think the reason that this is so plain will become very evident when we look at the rest of the kit because there's a lot more happening here, there really is. The, um, there's the bulkheads. I've got that one out just so you can see it. Really not much to talk about there. Well, there we go. Have a look at the boats. I mean, they're, they're beautifully done. Beautifully done. So, um, you know, you've got, um, that'll be lifeboats. There's, I've seen this a lot lately where they're done in two pieces, which is terrific. So you can paint inside, inside the boat. Although these ones have got some horrible sink marks, but probably can fill those. I've noticed this a lot on the kit. These, um, these things here. I don't know if that's um, a special part of um, the injection process or, or or is this one slide motor? I don't know. I always think they're slide motor when they've got the little square sprue, little flat sprues, but I could be wrong. But um, interesting sprue thing here that bumps up to protect tiny little parts. Uh, the anchors, nicely detailed. So um, there's just bits and bobs on there. There's a few, um, few little things that become more apparent later on. So let's move on. Moving on to step two we start to build up the secondary armament and I may or may not replace those barrels. Um, we'll have a look at those in a sec. But what I want to show you first, because steps two and three basically are putting on the decks and you will have to fit the armament in. But let's have a look at the decks. Now, these through the plastic looked incredible. And as I said, this has got to be slide molded because of the way the, uh, the moulding there the way it's done, that's, that to me is usually evidence of slow line. So let's have a detailed look of what's installed on the decks. Can you see the detail? Can you see the planking? Now what's been my bugbear with most of the um, decks I've seen lately, and the wooden ones mind you, is they put all the planking joins evenly, which is absurd because that's not how it would have been at all. It would have not have been all regular. As you see this with artwork decks, all the, all the planking joins are all absolutely lined up. That's not true. And um, the Pontos wood decks at least only had four to aft, bow to stern, 
um, you know, marking for the wood deck planks, and you could go through and mark them wherever you liked, which gave me um, the ability to make it look more realistic. But this is so fine and so detailed that I'm starting to forgive the um, plainness of the side of the hull because this deck is fantastic. Now, there's not a lot to mask out because basically a lot of parts got they're going to go on because this is quite a comprehensive kit. There's, there's quite a lot of, of the greebles actually get assembled later. So I'm, gee, I'm so close to saying stuff the wood deck, I might just, um, I might for once paint this and run a wash over that and see what we've got. So um, very nice, very nice indeed. Very, very nice. The other deck parts, you're also getting exactly the same quality. So look at that. It's a very nice kit. I mean, that's lovely. I haven't even seen like Hasegawa or Aoshima do quality like this where it's so crisp. And um, I know there's Utamia lovers up there. Still yet to be impressed by Tamiya ships. I do have the, um, I do have the uh, Prince of Wales. And it's very nice. But I don't think it's anywhere near this, honestly. Not at all. But that's my opinion. That's my opinion. And here you're going to have the, um, the cradles for the boats. They're all going to be PE. More of that later. That's the thing. There's a lot of stuff gets added on. There's not a lot of greebles to mask out or hand paint, which is usually my bugbear with um, wood decks on ships, is that, oh, gee, you know, you've got so much stuff to paint around with. And that's why I've loved the wood veneer deck, because it's a mask. And, you know, I can spray the whole deck plastic part the colour I want, usually grey, put my uh, wood veneer on, and bingo bongo, everything's, um, you know, stenciled out. But um, no, that is really good. Let's have a look at that secondary armament now, because that has to sandwich in between the decks, which is very typical of your World War One battleships. Now this is J sprue, and you get um, two of these, and those are the secondary armament. At first, I thought they might be hollowed out at the barrels, at least, but um, I don't know if it's caps on them or, um, or tiny hollows. Actually, when you hold it down that way. I think it's caps, but they are they are very nicely moulded. But one of my biggest bugbears, they have put the sprue joint on the side of the barrel, so you have to clean them up. No, I won't. I'll be putting in metal ones. No, I can't stand that. Can't stand that at all. The rest of the sprue, we might as well have a little look at while we're here. So you're getting the um, the props, screws. Right. They're very nice. The, um, the main barrels, which are hollowed out. So, I mean, you probably wouldn't even need to buy metal barrels for those. Uh, but again, you've got to cut them off, you've got to tidy them up, which I hate. I absolutely hate. I, I detest doing that. Maybe, I mean, you might be able to get away with the larger barrels. Once they start getting really small, all of those tiny ones, those tiny little beams, I think there were support beams on the um, the Varag, there was no way my fat hands could hold and cut and shape something so small. But there's a lot of that. Uh, there are ways of getting around that and making that sort of thing happen. But quite often, I will take all these little things and I will just make them out of brass. It's not much money, you know? Make them out of brass stock. Because, quite frankly, for the amount of time you spend cleaning that up and mucking around, it's not worth it. It's far easier to take a piece of um, brass and just quickly scratch it. <laughs> I'll show that. I, if you've watched the Varro videos, you'll um, you'll know that that's what I did there. But anyhow, the, the moulding is still lovely. It is really fine. And it is really detailed. You know, this is a hint of things to come. Turrets are in two pieces, the lower lower piece which is going to have the locking mechanism or the connecting mechanism for it to um, slot into the hole which means with a bit of luck we'll find out later I'm guessing you won't have to put tabs underneath which means you can leave your turrets off put them on at the end and they'll click in which I rather like as well so um, there you are sort of it's a bit of detail on those turrets but you'll let's see there's a lot of PE in this kit so you can't make a lot of judgment on things because there's stuff that's going to go on later and let's find out what's going on later. Next steps five and six deal with basically putting the, um, oh, I always forget what those things are called. You know, those things. Look back. I remember what they were before. I don't know why I have a mind block about that. Prop shafts, yes. And um, they are, uh, they're a nicely moulded little piece. Nothing to write home about. You know, there you go. Over that. But um, the rest of the bits and pieces you're going to need on here, which are on sprue E, Sprue E is definitely slide mold. Look at that. that that's, that's, that's evidence of slide mold technology. Um, and it has that crispness about it. Almost almost feels like a resin part. I mean, you know, I know I'm, I'm sort of 
pushing the exaggeration a little bit there, but these are so crisp and clear. And this is a piece that goes underneath one of the funnels. And look at that, look at the little fins, bump, bump, big fat fingers. Look at the fins and, you know, the detail there, um, the crispness of it. I mean, there's only the details, the fins, really. But um, beautiful, beautiful. And like all the rest of this kit, everything is clean, everything's clear. It's got a lot of little protection tabs on. Um, you know, there's just, it, it is such a joy to look at this thinking, the potential for this kit is incredible. And for those of you playing along at home, you may have noticed back on the previous sprue with the turrets, there were only two. And you've got two sprues, which is only four. This thing's got five turrets. So even I was thinking, oh no, these guys forgot to mold the extra turret. Six bases, four tops. No, 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 no. Here we are on this sprue. There's your missing turret top. So you can't make up your six turret. You've only got a base. So Bass the Cat will not get that to play with. And here's um, another piece of superstructure here. Um, not a lot happening, but it's, oh, look, there is there. There is there. So you've got um, ladders and doors. Very nice, very clean. Um, will not need much at all. I mean, often if I need some more doors and uh, a few little you know bits like that, I've got spare leftover PE from from other kits that I you know didn't get around to using. So I can always just add a few little things here and there. I feel a bit of um, a bit of superstructure is a bit plain. I usually try and check for reference, but often you just do it to jazz it up, you know, make it look nice. Okay, well um, after five and six, you've basically got that on. Um, well, these are these little superstructure parts we've been talking about. So they're going in there. Again, there's some more. Um, this is actually tertiary armament, which we hadn't looked at. We'll, um, we'll dig that out shortly because that's in the sprue that's all covered up with that, that protection foam piece. So we might dig that out now. But um, what I'd like to show you here is we get to this point and we're starting to add PE parts. So I'll have a quick look at the PE, I think, because um, that's very comprehensive. This is P fret A, there's a B and two C's as well. And you can just see how much how much detail they're giving you. So there's um, there's rails for around superstructure here. There are uh, a little uh, grab rails there for around the funnels. There's a tile piece here, which is, um, this looks like the, uh, on the front superstructure there, basically the, uh, the command area, you know, the, uh, <sighs> It's where the captain sits, you know, sits here with his pipe and everything and somebody steers the ship. What the hell is that called? I don't know. Um, you know, the command, the command area, whatever. Um, you've got um, some lovely little ladders. I mean, it's just state-of-the-art PE. Uh, what, what can you say? It's beautiful. And they give you a nice stiff card, which is good. Uh, I like that because you can put that card on your cutting board and then cut these straight out of the card. Unless you've got um, Zeron sort of scissors like I have. You can cut them all out. But that's, um, that is really going to improve this kit. Now the drawback is, if you don't like PE, you are rooted. Yes, I don't think there's any plastic alternative at all. You, um, you're you expected to use the PE. So there's there's all kinds of lovely things there. I know that there's um, cranes, um, that there's there's a, you know, davits, there's all kinds of things. And there's little little boxes here. Well, we'll find where they are in the instructions as we go along, but I thought it'd be a good time to roll this out now. And you just see, it is beautiful, state of the art, good stuff. Well done, Hobby Wars. We'll jump forward in the instructions a little bit here, but only because of my own stupidity. Um, I couldn't remember what this thing's called. It's the bridge. It causes the bridge. Oh dear, I don't know. Uh, it's, um, I've had too much New Year's eve sort of stuff and celebrations, but uh, here you go. Now, um, is his sprue B, or fret B, if you'd like to call it. Photo etch fret, supposed for plastic sprue. And I was a bit worried about touching this stuff before because I don't have to touch the PE because it gets all gunky. But it doesn't matter. You know why? It's got plastic on it. I don't know if you can see... The whole thing is sealed. It's wrapped in plastic. Yeah, if you watch Twin Peaks. <laughs> They're all wrapped in plastic. You can hold the bloody things. You know, it's not a problem at all. Um, you're going to have to be very careful cutting that off. We'll see how we go when we build that. Um, but they are protected. So they are. That's pretty clever. So yeah, tons of rails. You've got rails for everything. And they will be marked and indicated um, through the kit. We might as well finish off our um, PE adventure. You get two of these. This is um, Fret C. And you've got some more, um, looks like funnel grab rails there. A few more um, stairs. Got some lovely cranes there happening. They're going to be gorgeous. And that's the steering wheel for the uh, captain in the bridge. No, it isn't. I don't know what that is. It was like a capstan or something or something like that. And, uh, and there's a few other little bits and bobs. and lovely ladders. They usually go up the side of um, funnels. 
And look, there's a little pulley there. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Let's see if I can get a bit closer. Look at that. Very nice. Very nice. Proprietary PE. Hobby Boss, you guys are doing a great job. You really are. Let's just zip back in the instructions because I've jumped forward a bit. I'm trying to show you everything here. So, um, well, we've had a look at these parts. They're all very fine. There's one of those ladders. That's a PE ladder. Uh, you've got indications all the way through what to do when you need to bend your PE there. They're indicating that. But yeah, you could leave these rails off. If you don't want rails, that wouldn't be a problem. You can leave those off if you don't want that sort of thing. You know, you could leave the ladder off, although it's not a hard part to cut out and glue on, really. Um, rails are always a little bit tricky. So um, if you really didn't like it, you could leave those off and you still have a lovely kit. But of course, I'll put them on. Love rails. Yes. you just got to know enough square words to be able to get through it. And here's your funnels, and again, you'll have all these little PE. Now, sometimes I leave these off. It just depends. If um, if I cut out a few and then bugger them, because they're kind of so fine and they break, as happened to me, I think, on the, the grass spray, I just went, oh, bugger it, can't bother. <laughs> you know, it just proved to be too thin and too fiddly, and, and, and it didn't add that much more detail to the funnel. It's nice to have, but um, quite often, I wouldn't mind that moulded on personally. But, but we'll give it a go, see how we go. Say we bugger it, we just throw it away. Don't care. Um, they've got searchlights there. I did, don't know if the searchlight lenses have got little PE parts. Um, I had that for my um, grass spray. It really made the searchlights look terrific. But they were moulded fairly nicely. So um, I'll have a look at that. Maybe I'll chuck a little insert up of um, what the searchlights look like. But again, you've got your rails around there. You could put them in or not put them in. You've got the stairs. I think you're going to be stuck with the stairs because I don't see a plastic alternative anywhere. So you will have to put them in or you have no stairs. And your little guys can't get up and down from the decks. That sucks. All right, um, step 12, where you've got the whole bridge assembly goes in. Bingo, bongo. Steps 13 and 14, again, you've got sub-assemblies that you're basically just putting in. And um, things are coming together and looking very nice. I think we've looked at those parts. Oh, we haven't looked at that one sprue, have we? That's all the fine fur we'll Just zip through this, and then we'll have a look at that last sprue. So, again, you've got... Um, well, I was going to say radar, but I don't think it was invented by that point. There's your ship's wheel. Look at that. <laughs> oh, dear. What's that? That's a sub-assembly six there. So, um, oh, I don't know. It almost is like a ship's wheel, isn't it? I don't know. We'll have a look into that. Actually, it is because the bridge <laughs> goes over the top of it. So that's your ship wheel. So that, um, that tiny PE part, and that goes there, sits there on the front of the superstructure. And then you add this PE part, which you're going to have to put on. It's unavoidable. There's no plastic bridge. So that then goes on. So that when you get over to here, there's your bridge. So inside your bridge. So you'll actually have to paint inside that before you put it on. And again, you've got more ladders and rails and things. Really, they're not that hard. I'll show you how they go together. Actually, there's that great big, um, great big piece that I said was a ship's wheel. It actually is capstan. So those are two giant capstans. They go on the front there dragging the chains. And the chains, as I said, are supplied in this kit. You actually get a metal chain. I mean, they give you everything. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, there's, there's no reason you couldn't just build this out of the box, really. Just, you know, the, the quality is good. So there's your chains. They're going on. And um, then you've got little booms and things. So a lot of these, a lot of these I'll replace with brass. I'll just cut stock and put them in. Um, we've already looked at the, uh, the anchors. They go on. So zooming right along. These, oh, we need to look at these parts. So we might... Um, might go and grab those now, all that little funnel assembly, because they're, they are quite lovely. And then we'll dig out that final sprue with all the very fine details that are all protected. And here's that, um, that part I just pointed out in the instructions. I'm not going to take it out of the plastic bag. I think you can get an idea through there of just how, how beautifully moulded. Just like that other uh, superstructure part we looked at underneath the funnels. The, um, these fins are just Beautiful. Look how thin they are. This is, I think, the best that we can do at the moment with plastic technology. So they have done an amazing job to give you some terrific detail. So I say, you might be playing Jane on the side of the holes, but then as you start to add things and do things, it's really going to look terrific. I mean, you add a little bit of a wash to that and, um, you know, paint it up. Oh, it's going to be magic. Absolutely magic. There we go. All right, let's move along to those um, parts that are all hidden inside that little foamy piece. So here we have this sprue, which is all covered up in this protective sort of foamy stuff. 
and um, I've had this before on uh, trumpeter kits and, and hobby boss kits and I think it's a terrific idea to keep obviously what they think and what, what we hope are really fine little parts protected so um, let's see why they felt the need to get this and the first one that jumps out at me look at that that would be that would be the um, the watershed device I forget what the name is for this part um, some of your motorboats beautifully detailed some other very fine fiddly thing oh I don't know we'll try what I'll do is I'll try and cut them out and I'll try and see if I can get them together I mean one trick is I get in there with actually with the micro cutters and um, cut as close as I can and then very carefully try and trim the plastic but I mean one slip and you snap the whole thing boats all looking good lots of tiny little bits and pieces they would be the the stays for the front and rear masts I'd say and we've probably got those in here as well your nice little nameplate there you go might have used that's quite nice that'll look quite good with a bit of dry brushing so that is sprue F and it is F for fine there's lots of fine stuff look at there's a tiny anchor there look at it there's some lovely stuff on this kit there really is let's have a look at the um, last couple of pages of the instructions and then we'll wrap up finally we get to the turrets after all that and yes we've got a little bit of addition in P for the turrets we're, we're going to add on some rails that's about it apart from that turrets are just how they are they do get painted up with um, a little circle insignia goes on top of them and that'll make them look rather nice I've got some metal barrels coming we'll compare those to the plastic and then see how good my cutting out skills are and then we're basically on to the last page step 37 and you've got um, the little ladders that hang off the side of the boat so that you can have you know little motor launches come along and like, people can hop on and get on I forget the name of those boarding ladders something like that I don't know and the first thing you do of course is you add all the outside rails as you do so um, this kit has every potential to be just fantastic out of the box and a little bit of scratch work and it would come up even better now one thing that's missing that I haven't seen all the way through the instructions are the um, torpedo nets now they're in the box art what is the box art they wouldn't be that hard to scratch because really it's just a whole lot of brass tubing and I rather like that look and I think that's what's missing from the hull because the hull is rather plain it really is and um, you're gonna have to work out your own waterline mark that'll be fun I'll show you a trick when I build it of how I can figure that out to make sure it's nice and level but um, what would probably improve the side of this would be those um, torpedo nets or oh, just torpedo booms I won't do the full nets Have a look at that I've got a um, I've got the dreadnought full upgrade kit full Pontus upgrade kit which comes with the um, torpedo nets so I'll be able to have a look at that and see how the booms are made and everything like that in fact the Varag actually comes with the um, all the torpedo netting booms in the plastic so I can um, be fully informed as to how that should be and um, find some reference photos there's plenty of old online and maybe that's one little change I can do with my kit to make it uniquely my own all right well that's it um, I know it's been probably a bit of a long one but this is as far as I can see a fantastic kit and I am very much looking forward to building that this year, and I will. This is definitely a, I've reviewed it, and I will build it. So we'll get the Varag out of the way. We've got to finish that submarine, the, the Type 7. That not much more to do on that. And then the next aquatic adventure will be the SMS Sadist. Uh, uh said list. <laughs> All right, that's it. It's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Hidini. <laughs>